Hi, Shrini, a question for you about the uh, Ohio Mechanical Recycling. Um, did you say you already have the plant and you're working on it or you're going to build one? We have a Thai facility. Uh, I think uh, the announcement is out there in case if you want to look, right? The, um, we, the one on the left-hand side is the facility which became commercial this year in Thailand. Uh, it call, it's called Envico. It's uh, RDPE and uh, uh, sorry, RPET and a HDPE recycling facility. Uh, it's about 40 kilotons of capacity. It's online and mainly the RPET is going towards um, uh, fa fabrics, right? Uh, sorry, um, the yeah, uh, mostly into uh, textiles for us. Plus anybody who is. Uh, uh, the, we have a JV with the Pepsi and Coke to supply them as well. The Ho Ohio has been announced uh, June of this year. Uh, the final approval from our management is in place. We have a supply partnership uh, because that has been our headache is where will we get the material from. So we have a supply agreement in place and the plant is supposed to be online sometime in tw late 24, early 25. Uh, these are not our technologies, right? Uh, the Thai technology is a European partner uh, and uh, we, we, we basically are using a technology provider to build this. Uh, where we bring is the know-how and the utilization. Uh, Alnix alone uses about 10,000 tons uh, in their coatings of recycled, uh, will use about 10,000 tons of RPET in their coatings. Uh, so we are today bringing that from Thailand and providing it to them. So long term, we would really like to uh, use US supply to supply that market in, into powder coatings. Maybe. How do you deal with the end user? Because I know directly you don't deal with them. And uh, the reason I'm asking this question, we are equipment manufacturers and we are looking at converting some of our components from metal to plastic. But with whom do we have to deal to see which is the best engineered plastic to use for different components? Honestly, very tough question, right? Uh, depending on, look, we apparently, I, I've been with them with PTT GC only for a couple of years, but this work started way back in 2016 when they were doing a lot of business development and they still continue to do business development with a lot of, right? To place that 40 kilotons was a lot of work because each customer is different in the spec, uh, what they want. And in some cases it's over-engineered, in some cases it's under-engineered. So it, it is a crazy, how price sensitive some of these customers are, uh, how sp how the specifications differ. So in this case, we don't know what we need. It, it, honestly, you got to go and talk to the customers, and the challenge is it'll be different across, right? It's not one solution, and so most of the time for us, right, we're talking to coatings customers. We're talking to all the people who make uh, like drink bottles, right? Each and every one of them, the large ones, the small ones. Uh, we are talking to people who would uh, be textile manufacturers. We are talking to people who would uh, be component producers. So it, it is not one person that this team talks to. There are actually six people from Thailand here in the US just to go meet these customers, just focused on business development. So they are doing the business development now for a plant that comes online in 25, right? So they're bringing material from Thailand, Sam it, making sure the market seeded. So when this plant does come online three years from now, they have already done the work and they can just get the material there. It's it's not easy. So uh, I have a quick question. So one trend that we've been seeing is that in terms of uh, recyclability or overall sustainability, we're using more and more same uh, base polymer to sort of make uh, specialty polymers or newer newer uh, application specific uh, polymers so for example uh, automotive uh, and we use a lot of polypropylene modification yeah. and we're we, we trying to understand whether uh, the PoEs that we use for uh, poly uh, polypropylene modification are is the industry trending to using more and more propylene based PoE uh, as opposed to ethylene based Look, uh, I don't know about propylene-based, but I can tell you ethylene-based, you cannot recycle more than six to seven times. 
after that it doesn't work right so you will have to discard after 6 to 7 recycles uh, we have not tried propylene based i don't know if it can be infinitely recycled but uh, we'll have to wait and watch right so that kind of puts a limit on ethylene based how much uh, it can re-enter the market stream right there's an eventual uh, outlet for it don't know if chemical comes in at that point of time and you take it back to the monomer and if it can be reused but uh, propylene based i think at least for us from our end we have n we are still early stage right we are still early stage our next one is going to be all the wind blades and uh, those kind of applications for recycling because there's so much of that that's coming back uh, that we are going to go around with fiberglass and those applications before we go to propylene recycling what i can say i mean um, for my previous company is k has made a JB with a company, um, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, Pure Recycling. That was on, on the last place, year. Yeah. Last year. And, and, and they do have a very interesting technology to recycling a, a polypropylene. So I, I do believe uh, there are companies that, that are working in, in polyolefins and there are other companies that are working in, um, I mean, sorry, in, in polyethylene base and others in, in polypropylene base, but certainly the polypropylene players are super worried about it and, and this is something that is, is going to come through as well.